FM. Welcome to the Goki India Steps Challenge. I'm Shireen Bhan. If you haven't been watching, well, let me give you a quick roundup of what we've been doing on Network 18. We've been running the Goki India Steps Challenge, which basically means that we've asked you to walk 6,000 steps every single day for 100 days. If you haven't joined the campaign, it's not too late. Go ahead and do so right away. Well, today on this special edition of the show, we talk to a woman who exemplifies accomplishment. She's a commercial pilot, she runs, she trains, she has her own startup, she's a mother, she's a Miss India, and she's someone who stood for the Lok Sabha elections in 2014. She almost seems annoyingly perfect, especially when you're having a bad day. Join me as I get into a conversation with Gulpanath. Fit as a fiddle might be a cliché, but Gulpanang truly embodies it. Born into an army family, Gul has always believed in having a robust lifestyle. An icon for women's fitness, epitomizing today's modern Indian woman and inspiring everyone to get into their running shoes. Let's see what motivates Gulpanak to do so many different things and be truly free-spirited. Gul, thanks very much for joining us on the show. You know, in my introduction, I just said that there are days, especially when you're having a bad day, that you seem annoyingly perfect. <laughs> okay, like there's every single accomplishment you can like check boxes off any checklist. How do you manage to get all of this packed into a day? I'm a planner and I, I make plans hmm. and I constantly reevaluate them. And uh, I remain really committed to my, my, my goals, but I remain flexible in my approach. So my goals could be, I need to do this, 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 this. Every day is a, is a day which is stacked with goals. Yeah. So a meeting is a goal because getting out of the house, the little baby is a goal. Huh. So I, I plan my day really well. I remain quite committed to the four or five things that I have to do today. But I'm fairly flexible. If something goes wrong, I leave adequate room for maneuver. But what is it that drives you today? Uh, you know, and as I pointed out, uh, you know, you fly. Uh, you have your own sort of business ventures. You've dabbled in uh, in a bunch of startups. You're now uh, a new mother. Um, you're uh, an avid biker. You do car and bike shows. I mean, how, you know, what is it that drives you today? Uh, and what is it that you you occupy? I mean, I can understand time management, but from you know something that occupies your bandwidth, what is what is that about today? I'm aware of some of my strengths, and yeah. I try and maximize my potential. Mm. And I, I grab every opportunity that comes my way which fits into my potential chart hmm. and I bridge that with a, with a plan. You actually have like Excel sheets no, and it's, it's, it's all a vision head. board or any it's, of that is in your head? It's all in my head and to be honest it's all and all of this happens when I exercise. So in the time that I'm exercising or let's say I'm, I'm running I will plan out my whole day. Hmm. I'll plan out what I'm going to wear uh, down to the de detail of how I'll you know which bag I'll carry or something yeah. like that. And then I, I, I run through the whole day with a with a like a like a school timetable, hmm. and I'm going to do this. And now I have a, I also have a degree of rigidity in my schedule because of my son. Yeah. I have to take him to the park at 9 a.m. and at 5:36 p.m. Hmm. So during that time, I have to fix lots of things. Hmm. I sort all of that out when I exercise. Hmm. And, and was this something that you always did, or again has this been something it's that you've come to embrace later in life? Acquired, uh, Shireen. Um, we both come from armed forces backgrounds. Yeah. I do too and my dad um, dad pushed me into committing myself to exercise when I was 15. I didn't enjoy the commitment, it was a forced commitment. He said you have to go running and I said why? Because you have to, it's good for you. And already at that stage I had developed this fallacy that uh, only overweight people exercise. Yeah. And uh, I said, I'm not fat, I'm not overweight, why do you to exercise? Yeah. But he said, you've got to do it. But what he did, Shireen, was he ran with me. Hmm. So when I was 15, my father was 45. Yeah. 
which is not young yeah uh, but he would go running with me every Don't single day that. i mean i know <laughs> <laughs> it is yes 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 because 40 is a new 30 i'm 40 so um you know he'd go running with me and there was no escape hmm. and for 3 years he did that every single day because he was on an assignment in zambia yeah and he had a structured life from a 9, a nine to 5 uh, role he was playing he was setting up staff college for uh, zambia and we uh, every day he'd come back in the evening and there was no no way out for hmm. going for that run hmm. I used to hate it, but it just became like a habit. It's like you inculcate a little child into yeah. brushing teeth. Yeah. They don't like it. Yeah. I know they don't like it because they throw the brush out. Huh. I'm experiencing that right now. Huh. But it becomes part of your life. And yeah. sooner or later, you begin to see its benefits. And it's been part of my life for a, since I was 15, so that's 30, 25 years now. Huh. And I've always noticed that right after I exercise, hmm. I'm positive, I'm objective. I can take on the world and I feel that there's nothing I can't do. Uh. That feeling lasts for about an hour, an hour and a half and I structure and schedule all the most important things of my day during in that, that period. Yeah. You know, I, I want to ask you, Guru, because you were talking about uh, the benefits of being physically fit. But in the world that we live in today and especially for somebody like you, you know, in, with Insta filters and social media, I mean, you're supposed to look good as you enter the gym and you're supposed to look great when you exit the gym as well. And one bad picture can sort of, you know, is, is, the, is the death of sort of celebrity as we know it. What kind of pressure does that put on somebody like you and how do you relate with this? I mean, do you take it seriously? Do you not take it seriously? seriously how does it work a lot you know I often I have a rule that I will not go on Instagram after nine o'clock because it begins to mess with my sleep mm. because I begin to think of myself as inadequate mm. because I think I begin I'm sorry I feel very inadequate when I look at you no. and when I look at your Insta post I, 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 I yeah, SMS'd you, you as yeah, well you did. Uh, because you know that's my point like you know there are days when you feel like okay you know forget forget the, the hair and the skin and all of that but you just feel overwhelmed with everything that's happening and then you know on Instagram Instagram, you'll see everything's perfect and beautiful and and you know the, and for a lot of people that seems almost as if that's the that's reality right, it's but not. it's not it's not your reality it's not. and it it's not there's either, either. either. yeah there's either. so how do you how do you deal with that so I try and post my pictures as uh, as real as possible I mean my pictures are usually like sometimes not even in great light and you've got a lot of under eyes and all of that frown lines visible because um, I don't want to succumb to the pressure where I try and a present uh, a picture which is not real because it's not I mean you've, at some point you've got to be responsible for what kind of mm. aspirations you're setting uh, for people out there you may inadvertently yeah. push somebody already in a very fragile position over the edge because yeah. they I mean they could be going through a bad bad time and all they need to see is oh, this perfect life yeah so um, I, I in fact all of my fitness pictures are really ugly because they're just sweaty and then there's like they're just not they're not really really attractive to come back to what you're saying I think it's not perfect I think there's too much pressure to make it look uh, really good and uh, all fantastic mm. and I feel more people should, should just go out there be themselves because mm. I think you should you should you should look for inspiration around yeah. you finding real role models around you I think to, to be your mind should be open enough where you get inspired by people by everyday people mm. and in turn maybe to give back you should do something that's also inspirational to people around you and maybe choosing the the, the path that's right over the path that's easy mm. not just in a larger philosophical sense yeah. in day to day sense yeah. I mean just about um, small things like I could take a I could take the steps rather than take the elevator. Yeah, yeah. I could carry my own bags as opposed to have somebody carry my bags for me, which yeah. is a routine thing that happens to people at airports. Yeah. Because uh, pe it's, it's a terrible culture where somebody comes and grabs your bag and yeah. Yeah. makes you feel important. What about the, all the other people and older people who actually need help? It's because you're a C CEO or a minister or a celebrity, you get your bags carried. For me, that's an opportunity to burn some calories. I mean, I'm just saying yes. that it's and also Im give an important message that you may be here to help me but r I'd rather you help somebody who needed the help. So I think the, the symbolism of doing the right thing can't be, can't be, can't be set, set enough uh, Shireen and especially when you become a parent you realize that the child is like a recorder that never stops. Yeah. He's always watching. So it's my endeavor to and be... And playing back what you do. Yeah. <laughs> it's my endeavor to only have him see the best of me yeah. till his personality is completely set yeah. till he but he discovers he's like who's this crazy person that I've been living with but the idea is you, you, should, you should be a role model for your child and for everybody around you
I agree and that is the perfect note to take a break. We will continue our conversation with Gul. Lots of food for thought as we head to the La Piazza at the Hyatt Regency in Delhi. Welcome back. You're watching our special. We're in conversation with Gul Panang here at the La Piazza in the Hyatt Regency. Uh, Gul, you know, food for thought. But let's talk about food. Actually, how big a part of your life is how you plan your meals, what you eat, what goes into the meals. Do you actively sort of make those choices, or I, are you lazy about it? Uh, I I try and think about what I'm going to eat and also reflect on what I have eaten. Hmm. So I keep a, on days when I feel I've been eating very wrong. I quickly go to keeping a food diary and suddenly realize, oh my god, I've eaten all this nonsense. Oh. Because one isn't even aware of. Sometimes you're sitting and you just grab a yeah whatever bar of chocolate or biscuits or yeah. whatever. So I try and keep a food diary. So I'm hyper aware of what I eat. Okay. And once the awareness sets in, then it's like. calories, etc. No, I don't count calories. Know. I just want to know what all I've eaten, so I'm accountable. Mm. I say, "Kisam, slyly, I've eaten one chocolate, and I'm going to pretend I didn't eat it." So you know, it's so, so this food diary is an everyday thing. It's in my phone. Okay. I, it's when I've fallen off the wagon, when I've begun eating wrong, because you know, eating wrong isn't just about impacting the way I look and feel. It's about water retention and yeah. too much yeah. salt, too yeah. much sugar. Hello. Yes. Good but morning. speaking of too much salt and sugar, we've got the chef here. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you for for, for having us here. So what what are you going to bring us today? Uh, we can do a couple of salads if you would like. Uh, it's his stuff. Fresh uh, leaves come from the farm. Sounds uh, good. Barley, it's summer. Uh, Sauté vegetables. Yeah. If you yeah. would like. Sounds very good, chef. Okay, no problem. So Thank see you. you in a couple of minutes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Cheers. You. Very Thank welcome. You. Yeah, so I, you know, okay, that's something that I could, I could consider. I try simply because of accountability. Mm. Otherwise, you lose track of what you've eaten, and not just sometimes you eat food that kind of. Doesn't go well with you, mm. and you're like, why? What, what, what is that? Oh, it's because I ate this. So if you can't recall the last two days of what you've eaten, yeah, then you're not eating with awareness. Mm. So I try and make sure that I'm aware of of my my eating. Mm. And the second thing that I do is I tr I constantly remind myself that the body is a is a vehicle, yeah, and it has a fixed fuel capacity, mm. and and that's linked to how much. How much the body moves, yeah. to some extent, but even then the capacity is fixed. Mm. So I try and remind myself that food is meant to be fuel and nutrition, and not entertainment and enjoyment. So I, I try and de-link. Not to say that I don't have um, celebratory meals, mm. or uh, I wouldn't like to call it binge or cheat, but um, I remain disciplined because I don't want to give. Again, I'm pontificating. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, That's okay. But you know. Um, there's so many things that are not meant to be eaten by us, Shireen. Yeah. Like, I don't know, do you have a dog? No. Do you like dogs? Yes. You don't give sugar to your dog because yeah. baal jhar jayenge. Hmm. Or it's not good for him, but we just put it all into ourselves. Hmm. Just because we don't see the long-term impact. Right. A dog has a life of 15 years. The right. impact is visible immediately. Right. Or a cat. Hmm. For human beings, because we are able to metabolize it, doesn't mean it's good for us. Mm. Sugar, as when I say sugar, I mean processed sugar. Yeah. Or processed food. So thumb rule is as far away from processed food as possible. Food diary and accountability via f diary and fuel mechanism. That's it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to shift focus away from the food, but talk, continue to talk about awareness. Uh, and I want to talk about the 2014 uh, Lok Sabha elections uh, and, and that experience for you. And is it something that you know you've given up on? Is it something that you would consider going back to? Was it just a one-off? I mean, what was that about? Um, sort of chronicling my journey. To answer the first question, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I would go back and do it again with the same outcome. Mm. Um, Which means that you know that you would not make it. But I would know it at, the ta at that time because I would interfere with my my zeal and my enthusiasm and my passion. Mm. So, uh, but because in retrospect I can be objective and I can go back and say. This has been such an incredibly learning experience. For instance, you learn all the processes firsthand. So I knew that. I mean, I figured all those things out firsthand. Mm. Uh, fundraising. My campaign was was 95% publicly funded. We raised adequate money. 54 lakhs was the UT limit. We raised close to that. We returned so much money because we couldn't spend beyond a point. Because we just ran an effective campaign, keeping you in mind. You couldn't spend 54 lakhs. Uh, well, we finally ended up. I think we must have closed at. 50 or 48 or something. Remember, even things that you're not spending on is getting attached to your election expense. Right. So if you host a gathering for me of 50 people, yeah. 
the cost of tea, uh, whatever is there, is is getting added to my expense. Hello. Oh, thank you very much. So, um, we refunded some money. I didn't have the luxury. Yes. Thank you, chef. That is a family one. Thank you. And that is a family one. Thank you. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. Have a good time. Uh, we didn't have the luxury of doing big spending, mm. but we were smart about it. I used um, we did a lot of door to door. We went to um, a lot of places on motorcycles. Walked a lot. Mm. We we averaged 15 kilometers a day as per my friend's uh, wearable. You know, I think I learned so much about the basics of how to run a campaign, mm. and I also learned that you can run a clean campaign that's also effective mm. uh, while it's also positive. What would make yeah. you want to do it again? The sheer learning of it, mm. the amount of how much I learned on that uh, election, not just about the process of electioneering, but also about myself. Mm. The fact that I just found a part of me that I didn't know existed. Mm. I found me in a in a manner that um, that I had not known for a long time because being a, a celebrity, you kind of have this mask on your face mm. where you're expected to be prim and proper. Uh, not just in terms of the way you look, but in your conduct as well at all times. Mm. Over the over the first couple of days of the campaign, just because it was so exhausting to keep that mask yeah. on, yeah, I just let it go, and it just I just became so much easier with myself. Mm. Has that carried through? Yes, more or less. Mm. Also, I'm older. <laughs> that that is true. That automatically happens when you're that, 40. That is no, true. No stress about what somebody thinks about you. Huh. That what somebody thinks about you is their isn't, problem. Isn't it liberating? It though? is. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. Lots of things on on the checklist that you still want to be able to accomplish and still want to be able to do. Give me the the top three or the top five. So I do want to climb Everest. And my husband's like, you know, just give, let, let let your son be a little huh. older because um, the rate of uh, fatalities on the on, <laughs> coming down from the summit are pretty high. Hmm. So it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a pretty. Why do you want to do it? I just think it's something that I. I, I read about and I feel I should do. It's mm. like I want to do it because it's possible, mm. and there's a reason why I shouldn't be able to do it given the access to resources that I have. Mm. Um, two is I want to drive or ride the Silk Route because I've read so much about it and I'm a bit of a history buff. Oh. Um, three would be to learn how to play an instrument mm -hmm. before my son. <laughs> I can be a role model, and so look, I can play the piano. So huh. I'm hoping that I'll, I'll hopefully learn the basics of the piano. Okay. By the time he's cognizant and watches his mom, no, 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 it, it sounds so romantic. I wake up in the morning and play the piano. Okay. Uh, of the three that you have just noted, I, I, I think I can probably only grasp learning an instrument. Like the other two are, I'm not even going to attempt thinking about it, let alone do anything about that. Are, are you the hard taskmaster around friends and family? Are you the one who's whipping everybody into shape and getting them to like do stuff? And uh, I'm also very lazy. If you were to ask my husband, he'll say I'm the laziest person. I find He's, that very hard to do because I work in bursts, and then I. I'm like this person who I'm a che I'm a cheetah. Huh. <laughs> so I run when you I need to, huh. and other, otherwise I'm just lounging under the shade. Well, we hope that you continue to run when you need to and lounge when you have to. Gul, it's been an absolute pleasure. We wish you the very best of luck and uh, you know much more success. I hope that comes your way, and I hope you get to accomplish everything that you have now set your mind to, including climbing the Everest. Thank you, Shri. It's been it's been lovely talking to you, and thank you for having me. Well, with that, it is time for us to say goodbye to you on this special edition from all of us here on the show. Goodbye. Many thanks for watching.